everyone, welcome to another episode of Lifting Your Spirits where I'm going to show you how to make a cocktail and then take it to my guest who's waiting in the West Wings and we're going to just talk about stuff. And you're invited and that's why you're here because you also like to talk about stuff. You know that, I know that. Today I'm going to make you a cocktail called The Lion's Tail. It's a drink made in 1937 in London by an American. And apparently the name comes from the term of phrase twisting the lion's tail which is when all the Americans would provoke the Brits because on their coat of arms there was like lions I don't know I don't know it sounds too tetris to me I don't believe it either but I'm not here to talk about cocktail names I'm here to get you drunk okay so the first thing we need is bourbon whiskey 60 mils Go for something clean and crisp. You don't need to go crazy on expensive stuff because we're going to use this stuff here. Uh, pimento liqueur, which is made from nail cans and star anise and cloves. So it's going to take over a lot of the flavor and it smells kind of like Christmas, you know, but without having those arguments with your family. 20 mils. Uh, then we're going to in for some fresh lime juice. You've been watching this long enough guys, you know it's always fresh lime juice, none of that store-bought stuff. 20 mils. Now, we've got quite a lot of strong aromatic stuff in here, we need to bring it back down uh, with some sugar syrup, 5 to 10 mils. And then, we're going to go in with our Angostura bitters, it's the kind of barkeeper's secret. That's what we always kind of like, if something's not quite right, throw in some Angostura bitters, especially within these kind of like prohibition cocktails that use bourbon and piment. Complements it beautifully, right? One, two, three, four. Strong, aromatic, that kind of like allspice coming through and it's just perfectly sweet and citrus. So, we need to shake this up. So you take your nice glass. Boop. We just give it a nice old pour. Look at that color, man, that is beautiful. Mm. The last thing we need is just to go and give it a nice big orange zest around the outside, a little rub. Okay, all right, that is the lion's tail. Let's go see what our guest is up to. So, this guest of mine is, is a little legend on the Berlin comedy scene. She runs a good few shows here, one of them is Adults Only, an absolutely amazing podcast. She's a Kiwi. It's only Anna Beros, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Anna. Hi, Chris. Hi, Anna. How are you doing, mate? Are you good? Look, it's, you know, it's locked down. It's, uh, it's been tough, but, you know, I'm all right. I'm, I'm happy I'm here. Okay, I really appreciate you coming on the episode. I'm really happy to be, like, this is the best part of my day. Yeah, it's, as, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was said facetiously. It's actually genuinely <laughs> my fucking the best part of my day. No, it wasn't facetious at all. I'm really happy <laughs> like, to like, be I'm here. really glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I think I winked with the wrong eye, yeah. <laughs> Can you wink with the wrong eye? Is that a thing? Oh, no, I thought I was like... <laughs> I'm getting it. No one else says so. Like, why? Why is she like? Why is she looking at us? Yeah, yeah, totally. totally. Is she got something wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, how's the cocktail, mate? I don't, oh yeah, yeah. Um, I do want to try it. I don't. Yeah. I like. You've been very um, uh, supportive in saying that I don't need to drink it, but I do yeah. love whiskey, and I do want to try it. Yeah, please. And uh, I know the recipe now. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, because I don't want to condone, like, mm. I don't, I don't want, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a face that you can't, that's a face that doesn't lie. Right I there. haven't had whiskey in, like, 15, 13 months. Right. No, 15 months. Oh, la, la, that's really exciting. I, I'm a big whiskey fan, and I haven't had whiskey for, uh, since, uh, since uh, uh, December uh, 20, 2019. Any particular reason? I've had a lot of guests. I've only been doing this podcast in the past, uh, like pandemic year. Yeah, glowing <laughs> I already. Like I'm glowing. Uh, it's just those fucking daylight lights <laughs> that are out there, man. It's true. Um, so yeah, I've had a lot of people that have like not been uh, drinking and stuff. They've chosen not to drink. Hence me saying, you know, you don't need to drink if you don't want mm. to, etc. I kind of just do it for you. This is what I do. 
Yeah. For the 200,000 people that watch this each 200, week. 200,000 people. Come on, guys. I mean, I'm doing it for you. Even the guests don't like my drinks. I don't like the drinks. I'm doing it for you. I like that you'd never made this before. At yes. Films. And it was, and I like the name of it. The What is it? The Lion's, Lion's Tail. Tail. Mm. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I, I like that a lot. That, uh, that feels fitting. Uh, it's a scary drink, you know? Yeah. I'm a scary person. <laughs> Right. Um, so what's going on, man? Would, uh, my people need to know uh, kind of just who you are, what you do, uh, why should they spend the next hour listening to us? Look at us. <laughs> That's it. Fantastic. I love it. I'm done. Um, okay, who am I? Uh, I'm a stand-up comedian. Uh, I, I'm a show producer. I uh, I have my own podcast called Adults Only Comedy Berlin, which you've been on. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, thank you. Um, I really enjoy... Talking with comedians every week, it's been how I've survived lockdown. Like, uh, yeah, and also about adults only topics. I'm also on Clubhouse quite a lot, uh, practicing comedy and, and riffing on stuff because there's no live shows. Um, but I also make music, although we haven't released anything yet. And uh, I also look after children. Who's, who's, who's we? Have you got like a little band, a project? I do of? have a little band. Oh, I love it. Okay. And, and the name is actually so great. Uh, I didn't even come up with the name. My bandmate came up with the name. It's, uh, we're called death.porn. Death.porn? Dot. Death.porn. And we have the, we have the domain name. Ah, uh, nice. <laughs> Jesus. Anyone that's looking up that as, <laughs> as a kind of porn, that is a wormhole. Right. That, you know, that's, that's one of those wormholes where you've been, you've been wanking for seven eight hours yeah. and you find yourself you know that's beyond bestiality it's beyond everything and you're like well, it's dead death dot porn yeah right necrophilia is exciting um <laughs> and, <laughs> but i don't condone it but it is a great name like we're you know i think our music is about um sort of extreme emotions uh humor uh i don't know sex and like yeah just um it's more sort of like a bluesy um Bluesy, punky vibe, okay. I guess. What do you play? I play the drums, mm -hmm. and I play the bass, and I sing. But um, it's like it, a it's like an old like a one person band, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, fucking Dick Van Dyke here. This is <laughs> yeah. great. Got strings like connecting to things, and no, um, I mainly like I come up with I use the bass more to come up with uh, like song ideas. So like I'll come up with um, maybe like a like a guitar part on the bass and then like the next part is like the drums. So I use the oh, bass yeah, okay, more for okay. songwriting and then, um, <laughs> cause I'm so accomplished. I'm yeah. not, like I'm a total amateur. Um, but I love playing the drums and uh, I got myself an electronic drum kit uh, at the start of this lockdown. But I was playing the drums for on and off for, you know, with, with friends. And then this last year I have like every couple of weeks before I got the electronic drum kit, we were going to a recording studio or like a rehearsal studio. And so, yeah, so I like I'm a I'm an amateur drummer, but like I find it fun to. I always uh, I was always really jealous of people that played bass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm like mm, more more whiskey. <laughs> so I just you know, reach for the mm, I'll step with the wall. Yeah, I'm too excited already. Yeah, like yeah. I can feel the whiskey excitement. Um, like, you're jealous, envious of people. Um, who play yeah, bass. I am. Quite, I just loved how like you know I don't know is it quite a cliche or quite a stereotype the bass players are always quite grounded because they have that they can just do that bass line mm. the, the music is essentially formed around the bass isn't it yeah like that, uh, yeah the bass is like the the, the bass is the kind of yeah it's foundation the, of it's the, the, it's the flower of the skeleton. cake skeleton oh the, the, the what the flower of the cake the flower of the cake <laughs> Yeah. Oh, like, yeah, like, I was like, yeah. I was seeing blossoms <laughs> in a no. cake. I was like, food bakes with food. <laughs> blossoms. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah I know. I think that's not part of the cake. Yeah. Of the cake. The, yeah. oh, what were you going to say? You were going to say something way more. I uh, said the skeleton, the skeleton of okay. the song. Because yeah. there's nothing better than listening to some funk, yeah. right? And just hearing that fucking bass wander. <laughs> wander. The wandering, the wandering bass man. The wandering bass man. <laughs> I need, I need need some work. Uh, that needs some work. The wandering bar man. That needs some fucking work, man. That needs to be re reinvented, man. <laughs> well, yeah, because you know what? Actually, you know what's happened. I actually don't really like bar man anymore. Mm. I, I, I mean, I'm not. I, I, is it like a sex thing? Yeah, sex yeah, yeah. Thing? Like not. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's like because a bar maid is like. Ooh. Yeah, but I'm thinking like bar man for me in the past little while has become that, and I think in the future. I don't think it's got any longevity. Mm -hmm. Like Barman, so I'd, I'd really, I need to 
yeah, I don't and know. And bar person is a little bit clunky. The wandering bar person. The wandering bar person. <laughs> the wandering barkeeper. The wandering bartender. Barkeep is fun. Yeah, but maybe I should just cut the whole fucking thing and just call it something else. Yeah, know. like go sober. <laughs> go, go sober. <laughs> hey, that's good. I like that. Yeah. Oh my god. No, that's a niche. That is a neat. Well, it's, it's a growing. It's a really growing community in Berlin because Berlin is so like I don't know if you've ever searched sober uh, groups or, or clubs. This is searching um, on <laughs> Facebook or anywhere. Um, there's a huge growing community in Berlin because Berlin goes so hard. There's all of these these groups of people who have said no to drugs and alcohol, and uh, and that's also why like. Yeah, there's um, like Urban Sports Club. <laughs> Urban Sports Club, what's that? Urban Sports Club is like a, a gym membership across multiple different, like like hundreds of gyms across Berlin and uh, and like different dance classes and different classes and all these different, you can basically um, buy a membership and go to any place. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I get you, I get you, I get you. Yeah. Do you know what I'm dying to do, which I've never done in Berlin, is like join some sort of like sports club, right? Like... I have no idea. It could you know, be anything. Squash club, mm -hmm. badminton club, rowing club. Mm -hmm. But like, I kind of I know that there's so many amazing things to do in Berlin. I want to like dive into weirdness. Well, that's oh, that, so do something really weird. I think. Um, but it's also sport related. Yeah. So I think that that's you're on the brink of sobriety right there by thinking about this. And I think this is where like this this the sports club membership thing comes up because people go from extreme partying to extreme fitness and health mm. and sobriety. And so that's why I think there's so many different ranges of like alcohol free drinks in in Germany. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just like oh, there's so many flavors of soft drink. You know, if you go to the UK or Australia, it's like you get lemonade, cola. You know, yeah, like you've yeah, got yeah, like totally. four options, whereas here you're In like, Scotland you get laughter. Yeah, that's exactly. on the menu. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're like that to Bob. Get anything alcoholic? <laughs> well, this is this guy. Who are you with? Yeah. Like, but, why are you here? <laughs> but it's, it's, super, it's super important to also have a, a sober element to life. Do you ever do any uh, of this kind of fitness? Have you ever been involved in sports clubs and stuff? Or like institutions that rely on you to be there? Rely on me to be there. I signed up to this um, this program where I could use any gym across Berlin and, and whatever. And I like swimming. And I like... Uh, I, did, I did some of this like um, riding a cycling. Like riding a bike when you're still in the dark with other people. When you're still? When, like it's a still bike. Like you don't go anywhere. I think it's called like a cycling class. It's like a... Oh, right. And you do it outside? No, it's inside. It's inside. All right. And you do it at night? Uh, well, no, it's just dark in there. I see you. Okay, it's just dark <laughs> yeah. in there. Okay. It's like a nightclub. It was really cool in the first lockdown. I, I, I joined it. And you can, like, it's, like, dark. And all the bikes are, you know, like, a good sort of meter and a half be 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 between each of them. And um, I feel like this whiskey. I'm just going to blame the whiskey. I feel like it's gotten me all excited <laughs> and inarticulate. Um <laughs> <laughs> and and they turn all the lights off and then they have like party lights and strobe lights See, that's and music be. really loud and there's a screen that tells you if you're winning and how hard you're and you have this heart monitor that goes around here and you can see on the screen if your heart is going faster than everyone else's and if you're like mm. it's like competitive I like this. and party see okay I like that I like that mm. my friend back home has got a, a kind of um, I forget what, it, what it's called exactly but everyone dresses up in a luminous space spandex sports Ooh. gear lycra Ooh. and they essentially do like an aerobics dance fitness thing mm -hmm. with like you know what do you call the little luminous plastic light things that you used to have at the raves and djs and shit oh wow like uh like glow, glow, sticks. glow sticks and shit no like that. yeah 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 so they all get in this dance hall and rave and apparently it's really good i'm just wondering how sad that is though <sighs> Right. That we are hanging so much onto the party life, but we just don't want to get, you know, do the drink and the drugs thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, there's something about the party aesthetic that I love. Like, I love dressing up. Like, yeah. I, I love that. I love putting on some crazy makeup, and I love hearing loud, loud music. And, yeah, I think when all of this... So I've been sober, basically. Um, yeah, I was sober all of 2020. And now, like, I'll have, you know, very occasionally we'll do something else. But I think when everything opens back up again, I'm going to be one of the first people to go to clubs and, and yeah. you know, and, and dance and go do, crazy. Do you realize that, like, you, like, me working in bars for 12 hours a night, four days a week, kept me fit? Yeah, I can and then, that. And, yeah, and then going to the... Th I used to be amazed at how much shit I used to eat and consume and the amount of booze and stuff... And then, like, as soon as you stop for a year, it's yeah. like, hey, Chris, what's that little chin you got going on, <laughs> man? Hey, Chris, what's that little fucking little tits now, have you? 
And then, you know, you got your friends like playing with your. <laughs> and they're like, oh, what's this? And what's you're like, do I just. Do I just give me a break? You want to help? You want to help? You want to help? Help so, me. Do you want to introduce me to your squash people? <laughs> and I can get some badminton or something? Squash. Or, yeah, I think squash is. I find the bouldering people. I'm not judging, but I'm, I don't know. It feels like whenever people get too involved, too excited about a sport, it feels kind of like a, a cult. Yeah. And there was this real upsurge in like bouldering. Yeah, there was, yeah. Rock climbing. Yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah. when everybody likes something, I'm like, what's in this? Like, what's yeah, yeah, there's yeah, something yeah. sus here? Like, why are you all into this at the same time? And you know, like, what I don't like is like, you know, you're walking through the park and, and you just a, a normal park. And this guy's just got all these gear out and it's like fucking carabinas and ropes and safety ropes and shit. And he's just like, like a bag of powder and he's like, <laughs> and he's sitting there, you know, these people aren't really doing much. They're just kind of like picking up a rope, tying a knot and then like putting it down and they spend like an hour. And then you see him like throw it up into the big thick branch and then they kind of like, you know, they abseil up it, if that makes sense. Levy them. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what the opposite of abseil is, but... So they... So no. No, no, it's not happening. I thought I, she was getting it. I thought she was getting it, but no. I, I was like, I was going German because like the ab prefix, I was like, oh, like, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll sail. I'll sail? Like, no, no, that's not English. So I've got like, those are like, like, like super extremes, right? But I think it does, you could easily paint that into a picture of your local bar. Right? Mm. So where I work is this place called the mini bar and it is a bit of an institution. And I think people there see that as well, like the regulars. Mm. How long can I stay? How often do I come? How well do I know the barkeeper? Mm. Does the barkeeper know what I want to drink? Mm -hmm. All this kind of stuff. Because mm -hmm. all these things matter to these kind of people. That's mm -hmm. why they come back. That's why they go. That's why a lot of people have their particular place. Mm -hmm. And that kit is just another version, I think, of bouldering, and them have it, and then and then like the bouldering people just like having all the good gear and yeah, I get like there's this um is it like a status thing as I well as so. like a community thing naturally I think so. a status within that given community that uh, that everyone has a common denomination of you know mm. everyone is a, of the same kind of mindset. It's like I I can get up to the top of this this fake mountain. And I've done it lots, and so I can help you, and we can communicate because I have this this authority here, and so I can help you. But we can become friends. But are you going to come back next week? And have you got all this? Like, yeah, yeah it's yeah, all these yeah. points where they can they can they can share and yeah. cross yeah cross over. And why does everything ha have to be so hierarchical? Um, because like it stops us from killing each other. I think I think like we just want to know that we have power, and then that means that we know that we have power, so we don't have to like hurt anybody with extreme force. I was expecting a much lesser intelligent answer on that one. Oh, that yeah? was great, that was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, out the bag, like, we don't kill each so, so we don't kill ourselves. We're, we're lesser than the other, I like that. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I think that's, I think that's what it, but it's also just like a, it's a redis, redirection of, um, yeah, of that primal, primal, it's like based down, like that primal instinct of, of being like the, the lion, you know, and uh, the, the, the lion's tail. The lion's tail. Oh, she um, it. I'll check this out, okay? <laughs> Not even 15 minutes in, self-referencing, love it. It's comedian for you. <laughs> Well, it's your cocktail. You did that well. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's just a, a re like a sublimation and redirection of this, um, you know, um, a food chain thing. And um, yeah, and it, like it, it's it's not very evolved. Obviously. Do you think that works? Do you think you could take that uh, into the comedy world? That it gets like geeky and status and and stuff like that. Oh, it does though. Like mm. the comedy world's got a bunch of a, a bunch of higher less in Berlin, right? Yeah. Because Berlin's like this little this little ratty kid in the in the, like the comedy world. You Absolutely. Know? No one gives a shit about Berlin. Absolutely. They're like, oh, you think you're a comedian that came up in Berlin? Yeah. What? Like it's Germany. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, Germany. Totally. That, oh, check you out, like getting a hundred euros for a gig. What you think that fucking? Remember where you come from, huh? Remember yeah, where you come from? Yeah. Piece of shit. Was yeah. just think he's getting a hundred years for a gig fuck you I'll see you next week at the open mate I was going to say cunt I don't know why I stopped I don't know why you stopped either I'm like yay <laughs> I don't know why I stopped I don't know <laughs> I thought of someone saying they don't like it when I say cunt, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's like my stepdad. He, I now get him laughing when I say the word cunt, and uh, and my mum's like, oh, you let her say that? You let her <laughs> say that? You get angry 
sorry when I, think, I say that. I think it's weird. I think it's my mum. My mum doesn't like me saying, saying the word cunt, but she's so kind of, my mum's kind of like free, kind of liberal. She's just mm-hmm. like, she's like, what fucking ever. Like, I swear at my mum, to my mum, she swears, yeah. kind of, you know? Mm-hmm. But I think cunt is the one that she's like, I just don't like that. And I can just kind of get it. Like that. I yeah. just don't like that one. And just I can kind of get that for what it is, you know? For what it is, sure. But like, we throw dick around <laughs> all the time, <laughs> you know? Like, dick, that, that guy's a dick. Like, you know, you'd even say that to primary schoolers, I think. Like, that guy's a dick. And they'd be like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stay away from that dick. Yeah. You'd yeah. be like, Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but um, I like my mom doesn't mind the word cunt. My mom doesn't mind it, but she's sort of taken on this thing from my stepdad, who's like, "Oh no, not not he's not British, but he's like, yeah, nah, not cunt." And um, where, where's, where's he? He's from? Australian. <laughs> I was like, I have to use an Australian. Yeah, okay, I was going to say, I was going to say, and your mom's Kiwi? Yeah. Okay, and yeah. you're Kiwi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When when did you? You said you were from Melbourne, Melbourne, or just outside? When did that? No, no, Melbourne, 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 not outside. All right, I do apologize. <laughs> uh, do you, when did that transition happen? What, what, what happened? The Kiwi to Melbourne yeah. thing. Um, my dad got a job. When I was three, and we moved over uh, when I was three. So it was my mum, my dad, my brother, and I were all born in New Zealand. And my parents were like, their parents were born in New Zealand, and their parents were born in New Zealand. So it was like, yeah, we moved over to Australia, and uh, and so I basically grew up in, in like my whole life basically being in, in Australia since like before, until I moved here. But um, uh, but so we you moved from it was from Australia to Berlin. There was no yeah. in between, right? There was no between. Okay. It was uh, yeah. I I packed up everything. None of this wandering and... fucking backpacking shit around like Thailand and stuff, and then going, oh Berlin's cool. I ran out of money. I'll stay here. Yeah, no. I uh, I was planning to leave Australia for a long time, and it was the right time. And then I sold everything and came over here with two two suitcases, no visa, no German. And uh, no friends except for Jill. <laughs> you've done all right. You've done all right for yourself, mate. You've, you've done all right. I have done all right. I have done all right. But I did. I did grow up in Australia with um, a very anti-Australian sentiment. So like, uh, I was teased a lot for my Kiwi accent. Which, okay. And I think. Um, Kiwi, what's your best Kiwi accent? Ooh. Uh, so it's um, very tense. It's very like it's very tense, isn't it? Like the Kiwi accent. Do you want? Do you want six? Do you, you want, want six? six with me? Yeah. Australian um. <laughs> okay, is very much, or are you on sex? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good, like, um, example sentence, but, like, um, uh, get the kids from the, get the kids from the backyard, uh, get some beers out of the chili bin. <laughs> uh, that's a really weird Kiwi accent. I'm going to regret that. <laughs> yeah, okay. But I can do the Australian accent quite well. What's but that, then? Um, Cause, I mean, yeah. what's a what's a good example sentence? Um, oh, you fucking can't! <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, fantastic! Yeah. You, you dug deep. You dug, dug deep. <laughs> you dug deep for that one. Oh my I God. didn't want to go there, like, why that was the first thing that sparked your mind. That getting into some fucking... Oh, you fucking Kiwis. Oh, you guys with your... your you think you guys are so better than us. Uh, yeah, they speak with, with poor grammar. Are That's you better? Uh, okay, are you better? Kiwis are better than yeah. Australians? Um, historically, uh, New Zealand sits better geopolitically, uh, much more progressive. One of the first countries, along with Scotland, to legalise gay marriage. Yeah. Um, also, the history with the, with the indigenous people, like, super cool. Yeah, totally, mm, totally. Like, yeah. of course, there were some bad times. But yeah, it was yeah, very... yeah. But they've got, they're more interconnected, aren't they? Totally. The yeah. Maoris, they're like that. Oh, we've, 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 we're right, we get you, man. We've, yeah. we've done some shit. Like, we, 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 how can we rectify this in a way? Yeah, and there was like a treaty, and they're far more integrated. Like, they're not integrated, it sounds like, but like they're they're an equal part of society. Yes. Whereas in Australia, it's a very different history. It is, isn't it? Māori is actually taught in primary schools still, like the, the language. So it's, you know, if you've got language, you've got power, right? That's amazing. Ooh, so, like mm-hmm. language is power, knowledge is power. And that's it. All right, okay. Whereas, um, you know, Australia, the history is, is really uncomfortable, and then there can, it persists this, um, this kind of blaming the indigenous people for their current state of, of um, like disempowerment and, uh, and just, yeah, like, they're, like it, the, the way it's being managed and dealt with is just horrible. Mm-hmm. And then there's a very um, anti immigration sentiment. However, Kiwis also have quite a bad approach to immigration i think that's what happens with island uh, islands. islands that are so far away from the rest of the world they can manage their immigration so they become quite um, xenophobic yeah it's a big uh, unfortunately a very big anti-asian sentiment across and it's like guys look where you are you're in asia like <laughs> yeah yeah it's kind of uh, australia's west 
mentality, yeah. kind of societal mm -hmm. uh, ideas and ideologies and all that, and they're just banging in the middle of Asia. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind mm -hmm. of it's quite strange. It's like it's very yeah. confusing for it's them. Like a massive Hong Kong or something like that. It's like what is going on? Yeah, well, it's like uh, just because th that someone was like, oh yeah, Australia is a continent doesn't mean that they're not in Asia. It's like all your neighbors are Asian countries. Of yeah. course, there's going to be a huge amount of migration and business um, connection. And yeah, so uh, New Zealanders are better than Australians. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, uh, on, on kids, just stick into the fitness thing, just briefly. Oh, yeah. uh, was it <laughs> the fitness thing? That's <laughs> how so do fitness in Scotland. Yeah, that's Chris's fitness. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't, isn't like Australia like huge big into like just outdoor shit? Sports, yeah. I was really against fitness for a long time because I think so much of Australians are uh, growing up, so much uh, sort of identity and self worth comes from being um, sporty and, and active. It does, yeah. And I was always the last person to be chosen for like the sports teams. Yeah, and I didn't give a shit. Like I didn't care. Like I, I, <laughs> I remember in primary school signing up for shot put yeah. and discus. Why? Because no one else was trying out. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. "Fuck you guys! I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do sports." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Discus, no one wants that shit. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't javelin. Oh, we yeah. did, we went allowed that. Oh yeah. That was like dangerous. Was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was like the indigenous people. <laughs> Rise yeah. above that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, uh, I guess the the little small shitty town that I come from and. You were supposed to prepare for something bad happening. Yeah, it's, yeah. A Scottish, it's a Scottish history, you know, you got to learn okay. how to fight. Yeah, yeah I suppose, with a big fucking spear. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, so I, I, I've only really come into fitness and caring about fitness uh, since I... Uh, well, I always did some level of exercise because I realized I learned when I, was, uh, when I was quite young. It was in my last years of high school when I was like very academic and I was like, fuck sport. I'm going to be an academic. You know, blah, blah, blah. Um, I read somewhere where um, your uh, mental health is um, it's like a pyramid and your mental health's up here and your physical health is what supports your mental health. Oh, yeah? So if you if you are physically not oh, okay... Oh, fuck sake. <laughs> Yeah, so I learned that quite young. I think I was around 16 or 17. That information was made available to me. And I was like, okay. And so I started skipping in the backyard. I mean, that does make sense, man. And I would do like sit-ups and I would, and I really hated the whole like body image pressure of being a female. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to exercise because I know that it releases some, I feel better here when I do it. And so I've always engaged in some level of exercise, but never wanted to you know, like, I fuck a community connected to it or, like, any kind of, like, visibility. I don't want to be visibly fit, doing fitness. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, because I've heard that, like, it, uh, the fitness can become somewhat addictive, actually. That, yeah. That release of endorphins that it gives you is uh, far superior than, like, drinking and drugs, which I can't wait for. Yeah, you can't, yeah, you can't wait for the fitness and dolphins. Yeah, 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 yeah. So well, that can be like that, look, you know, I need to, I need to start, and you go off my ass and like start it, mm. because I know that once I've been doing it for like a week or two, there's no going to be, there's no, no stopping. The thing is, what I did is when I stopped alcohol and I stopped weed, which was at the start of 2020, I, uh, I knew that I needed to not replace it so much as support my, um, I needed to give myself a way of feeling the benefits mm -hmm. of not doing these things, not just sort of stop doing it and then have kind of this void and not really. So basically, um, 2020, I would wake up every day and I would do a workout where I would do like 40 repetitions or depending on how much I feel, uh, sure. 20 to 50 repetitions of sit-ups, um, squats, dips and, uh, and push-ups, women's push-ups because I'm a sissy. What's, and what, what's a woman push-up? It's when you're on your knees. Oh, okay. We've got to be on our knees sometimes. <laughs> train those knees. <laughs> Get those knees trained up. So I would do my workout and then I meditate for 10 to, um, 10 to 20 minutes and I have guided meditations. I've got this app that I use, which is connected to like this Buddhist um, teacher that I really like. It's a free app. Uh, <laughs> what's the Buddha, uh, what's the Buddha guy? The Buddha guy, his name is um, Thich Nhat Hang and uh, he's got, um, and he's got some really good books. Um, the uh, book, No Death, No Fear is what really got me into it. Okay. And um, it's very much like, hey, like, like the first principle of Buddhism is any notion, like if you believe in something strongly, that's dangerous already. 
So it's like the whole idea is like always yeah. question everything. Yeah, 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 man. That's why that's why smoking grass is good, man. You know, it kind of just mellows out a bit and goes like that. Why am I so? Why am I so like concentrated on this one thing? Yeah. Why am I putting all my importance on it? You know. Yeah, and so like Buddhism is kind of like a weed was kind of like a cheat to Buddhism. It was like yeah, I want to yeah. chill out, so I'm going to smoke a joint. But then I yeah, and it was like okay, I need to start meditating if I want to replace if I want to stop smoking weed. And so yeah, by exercising and meditating every day before work, I'd already done everything for my physical and mental health that I could do in the day. And then like let the it. world shit on me. Man, I love it. like that. That should be that's a good model. Um, I I also do some meditation from time to time, uh, but I uh, I won't go into it now. But because fucking they've heard it a million times. But I done um, uh, this uh, vipassana mm -hmm. where you go for like ten days silent retreat. Mm. Uh, you don't look anyone in the eye. Uh, you don't. It's, it sounds beautiful. It's it's, it's a fucking, intense, right? It's a fucking nightmare. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, since then, and I've never really done any meditation before that, which was a kind of mistake. If you go to something that intense, and then you can get. But I got into it. It was fine. Yeah, I, yeah. I learned some shit. Yeah. Um. Man. But uh, yeah, I didn't uh, last the whole time. Man, six days. I was like, <laughs> get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> I was like, you did six days though. That's impressive. Yeah, six days. I thought so. I thought it's all right. You I were wish silent. I'd done no eye contact for six days. Nothing. Yeah. Well done. Nothing. Well done. That's very huge. strange. Yeah, yeah, very strange. But uh, so I kind of try and do in my good times. I can do like ten minutes only in the morning. Yeah. If, if I do anything else, something gets in my head. I can't really. But as soon as I wake up, first thing I do is meditation. Mm -hmm. That's Not cool. that I do that, but if I'm going to do it, then that's that's when it happens. I really need to get back into meditation. Every day, first thing I do. Yeah. First thing I do every day, and people actually listen to this, knowing about that. They're like, shut up. Yeah, not yesterday, but uh, the day before. <laughs> uh, listen, man, I, I thought we could, um, I've got a couple of fortune cookies here. Ooh, I love fortune cookies. I was thinking we could just crack them open and see... See what's inside. Why did you give me this one just then? Well, because this is broken. Oh, that's really sweet. I, thought, <laughs> I, I, gave you the, I was I like, why did you just switch them? <laughs> like, what do you know? <laughs> yeah, man, I'm really going to feel super bad if there's something in there that like, like opens up some horrible fucking shit. Oh, now I'm really excited. I love it. Okay, let's do it. Okay, let's do it, man. Yeah, I assumed the mains was broken, but... Um, Luke's no. kicks. All right, cool. So yours is broken, so you can read it already. Okay, sorry, you made ready. Uh, yeah. Okay. Those who really want to be happy must stay at home. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what? <laughs> Seriously? Those who like... those who really want to be happy must stay at home. No. The government is in on this. This is a lockdown. Yeah, the Chinese government. Oh my god, that's hilarious. Um. Right. Okay. So that's bullshit right there. But it's interesting if I'd gotten this because I'm having issues at home. Oh, right enough. <laughs> so I wasn't supposed to have it because I don't think... Well, let's see what this you is. You guys see what the other one could be the exact fucking same. It could be. Well, what else were you going to say about this? Because I interrupted. Um, just that that is not true. <laughs> you, know, you just say no to fortune cookie. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, no. No, fortune cookie, no. <laughs> no, that is totally not true. You can't just like... You know, those who really want to be happy. So it's not even like, those who really want to be happy. Yeah. If you want to be happy, those of you that don't, don't stay home, just go, go out and do your thing. But if you really want to be happy, stay home the and close is, the door. The question is, what is home? So home must be something like, you know, you have to, make, maybe it's kind of, uh, you know, Really saying something like just make your home nice, make your home Or is your home good. here and being true to your... Because okay, in... Check me out, all the aesthetics and shit, just make sure you've got a PlayStation, a big telly and a good sofa <laughs> and you'll be happy. But no, yeah, you're like, no, maybe home is I the think... heart. Like home and psychotherapeutic sort of um, theory is often like the home is the psyche. And so like if you ever have a dream and you're in a house, that's typically um, a metaphor for you, you, you and your psyche and so the different rooms and whatever. So maybe, yeah, it's like... Yeah, uh, but even then, happy, just staying in your own head? Staying in your own head. Would make you happy? Or maybe you need to put, put care into... Like, yeah, you need, to, you need to look after your home first before you can be happy. Right, but okay. staying at home, yeah, that's a little bit... Yeah, don't stay at home. I mean, work on your home, mm. psychological, yeah. heart, mm -hmm. aesthetic. Yeah. Work in that all. You know, make yeah. it nice. Yeah. Make it homely. Yeah. 
But, uh, you know, you don't need to stay there. Stay at home. Is it a sounds very bit. prison. It does. But maybe it's like stay true to yourself. I'm trying to give it, I'm trying yeah, to give it a positive Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Stay man. true to, to what's important to you and, your, and, and know yourself and stay true to that. Okay. And then you'll be happy. Okay, fair enough. But don't stay at home. Mm. No need. There's been enough of that for the past year. Okay, here we go. Oh, I'm excited. I, it's always a moment in my life when I get a fortune cookie. <sighs> Oh my god. <laughs> you have a lucky hand. <laughs> I do give a good hand job, but come on, like that's uh... is it but is it lucky? You have a lucky hand. And in German it's a glückliches a glückliche hand. A yeah, lucky wonder... hand. Okay, I wonder what's like in a you have a lucky hand. Maybe it's like a card hand. So it's like, yeah, that's I, okay. I've got a good future ahead. Well, uh, well, I've got yeah. a good future ahead of me. Like I'm like. You've got a lucky hand. It's coming. It's, it's coming. It's coming. Something good's going to happen to you. Yeah. I wonder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we're taking it too literal, aren't we? <laughs> Just I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I got a lucky hand. I got it. Ooh, goddamn lucky. Got <laughs> Ooh. Give me some dice. <laughs> Snake eyes. <hats. laughs> Give it a casino. <laughs> yeah. Now with a mask. Smoke it. Right, okay. I'm, I'm happy. I'm really happy with that. Okay, you have a lucky hand. Fair anything, enough. Anything you want to... I don't think so. I was thinking... I was going down the sexual route as well, really. Like, yeah. um, you know, you, you know, female masturbation, uh, man masturbation. I don't know, but... Female, think, ma female masturbation, man masturbation. <laughs> female masturbation, man masturbation, you know. All the masturbations. Man, all the masturbations. <laughs> <laughs> you ever masturbated an animal? Mm, that's an interesting question. No. I did, however, get off the train today rather upset. It's been a bit of the, the theme of my day, except being here. Okay. And as I was angry, I, I started concentrating in front of me and this dog walked in front of me. And I noticed, I realized <laughs> after like three minutes, no, three minutes, like 30 seconds that I was staring into this ass, this dog's asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wow, I'm really, ugh, like, uh, that's yeah, not okay. Yeah, yeah. Have I ever masturbated an animal? No. Right, Just okay. really fast. No. However, I did have a guinea pig at school who would eat its own penis off. Wow. Yeah, like it, it nibbled its own pe like it, it, it... Right, the way you say that, it, it like grew back and then repeatedly nibbled at its penis. Aye! Goodness, his yeah. dicks can grow back! Yeah, it was actually my friend's um, guinea pig. Jealous! I don't yeah. know how many times I've lost my penis. <laughs> but just the idea of like eating your own dick and it growing back. Is, yeah. There's a song there. <laughs> there's a song for Dead Top Porn. There's a... <laughs> yeah. Dead Top Porn, I've got that covered. Do you remember the song Detachable Penis? No. It might have been an Australian thing. I right. Detach Unless I'm just not that cool. That's also possible. That's also possible. Yeah. A detachable penis, now that is a concept right there. Yeah, right? And the whole song is about um, this guy like being like, oh, where did my penis go? And I see it walking across the street and mm -hmm. I have to go and get it back now. And there were better lines than that. Okay, but... <laughs> right, I see. I get the gist. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you could swap out you could swap out penises for for other penises depending on what. Yeah, you could like yeah exchange your amazing. penis for another. It'd be like ah, I wish I was uh, like I'd like to try being a, a Brazilian or I'd like to try being a yeah. Cong Congolese or I'd like to try being a, a, a Congolese penis. Congolese yeah. penis. Right, it's quite, it's quite specific, but fair enough. It was okay. well, well, actually, those are the, like if have you ever read the statistics around the not that I'm I'm sizest, but like have you read the statistics around the index of penis size in the world? Um, I haven't, no. No? No. That's good. That's probably healthy. Right. right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, I think like when you're a guy, you realize pretty quickly, <clears throat> there's literally nothing you can do about yeah, it. Yeah, there's nothing. So you, you got to just, you, yeah. got, you got to just go with it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like uh, if it's, uh, if it's micro dick, you know, like just make sure you, make sure you work it right. You know? Exactly. Uh, if it's a uh, big floppy donkey dick, then. Uh, floppy donkey. Then also, then fair play to you. Um, but it's you also, know. you have to work with it, right? Yeah, yeah. And if you're average Joe, then it's fine. Um, yeah, it's sort of like a vagina, right? Like you can't really. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're or like the, the vulva, really. you know? It's like if you've got a pastrami sandwich or if you're a tight little <laughs> button. You know? A pastrami sandwich or a tight button. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's weird. I, I, it's never really bothered me, that stuff, man. I've never been that kind of uh, sexually indifferent to physicalities, ever. Well, Congo's right up there. Uh, Dem so, Democratic, right. People's, Democratic People's Republic, let's, uh -huh. let's say. Congo, the, the yeah. Congo place. Mm -hmm. 
center of Africa. Yeah, number one. As a dem democratic republic. Uh, democratic. Yeah, it is yeah, democratic, yeah, so yeah. it's not. Um, and, uh, and then it's Brazil. And then at the bottom of the list is Korea. Fortune cookies? <laughs> Uh, Korea, yeah, well, that's a shame. But it is a shame. Is well, a shame. I mean, is it though? If you, if you, uh, would women uh, have a you know major issue with it if the whole country is uh, you know? I, I guess, and not like I've had sex with a Korean man, and um, and he was really good at everything else. He really put in like one hundred and ten percent effort. I, I, I respect that. He was so attentive to my needs. <laughs> the sex was very short when he was inside me. At, on all levels, was it very short? But um, <laughs> everything else he did, it was like wow. All right, okay. I like it. <laughs> he was a lot younger than me too, so he was very enthusiastic. But you little cougar. I have been a little cougar. Oh uh, yeah, you've been like some little twenty-two-year-old boys, like hey. So it's funny when it's 22. Oh, is he 22? Uh, he was probably 22 at the time. <laughs> yeah, but you he might have been younger, actually. How he long? might have been like 20 right, or 19. Okay. 20, 21. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. right. On record, for filming. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> no, he was legal. He was legal, but um, I'm currently... <laughs> legal. Immigration? <laughs> or... <laughs> yeah, he was actually also legal. <laughs> Legally in Australia, um, but he. <coughs> but I am chatting to a, a, a twenty-two year old at the moment, and it feels very. It feels fun. Ah uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how young I get. I think um, it's a bit yeah twenty twenty one twenty two. I don't know. You get into your little fantasies from time to time, and you're like. <sighs> you just don't want them to talk too much, and you want it to just be about sex. Mm. So long as there's no like, uh, is there a future here conversation, then it's fine. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. You know, like, that's, I don't want to start but, educating you. Yeah, but that's my yeah uh, thing with uh, all all age and all relationships. As long as there's no talk about the future, the future. Really, you know, <laughs> really, yeah, and the moment, deal with it the now. Because you know, one thing that I one one thing that I've had that's quite uh, common is very much like this isn't going to last. Like, wh who the fuck are we kidding here, man? Let's just enjoy what we've got. Yeah. And uh, the chances are, it might last five years, eight years, ten years, but the chances are this isn't really going to have longevity. And then hopefully, you know, you start to like each other enough that then you just secretly in the back of both of your heads, you go, let's make this a, long, a longer thing. Uh, I suppose with someone so much younger, it's, it's just more like, it's so clear that there is nothing. Like, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't want to talk to you really. Like, yeah. I just want to have sex with you. Yeah. But with, um, with relationships in general, yes, I think that's definitely something that I've come to more now that I have a purpose in life, which like, I guess I thought I had purpose before, but now that I'm really um, focused on comedy, it's like, I, if I meet anybody, it's like, well, let's see if this works with what I'm doing. Yeah, okay. Like, right. like, Let's see how you fit into this. Ex how we can work together independently, but like, you know, yeah, like I, I'm not gonna be, yeah, I, I have a very clear, like nothing's set, but it's like, I know where my motivation is and I know how little time I have. Yeah, okay, so if someone can slot into your... Um... If we can find time for each other between our projects, that's great. Yeah, okay, cool. But like, you know, this whole thing of like seeing a future out, it's like, I don't know where I'm going to be. Yeah, totally, Geographically man, totally. in, yeah, yeah, in yeah, five in years. Yeah, totally, man. You can't go down that road too quickly. Uh -huh. You have to be talking about kind of future and stuff. You know, you know, you have to be t start talking about future and stuff is like five or six years in, yeah. right? And um, Particularly if, 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 if you both know that you don't want to get married and you both know that you don't want kids, mm. five or six, seven years, and yeah. you're like, I mean, are we happy still doing this thing what we're doing? Yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy. Cool. Let's just keep doing this. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Um, but if you are together with someone for like two years or like a year, mm -hmm. and that conversation has already been kind of dropped, like mm -hmm. the, hey, so I definitely want to get married at some time. I don't know how, I don't know when, but I definitely want marriage. And the same thing with kids. Yeah. Yeah, that, that kind of thing does have to kind of come into play, you know? Yeah. A, a little bit earlier, I would say, two, it, three years, four years in. I think it should probably Because happen. you're kind of wasting each other's time in that, that sense, you Exactly. Know? And the older we get, the more it's important for people to not feel like they're wasting their time with someone who doesn't want the same kind of yes, future. So, exactly. up until comedy, I was very much a, so... Uh, I want kids. What do you want? And uh, <laughs> Great. Okay. and now I'm like, let's see what happens. Like I can't. I'm not having kids for at least another three years. And then I would like to be a mum, but like I don't know if I haven't done what I want to do in in comedy in three years. Kids might not be a good idea. Yeah. So like, 
What, is, what do you want to do? Uh, what do you want to do with comedy? What's your What's your game plan? Uh, that's a tough one to answer. I guess I want to get as good as possible, obviously, with um, with stand-up comedy. I want to be touring. I suppose the next step is to tour regularly with a one-hour show uh, around Europe and maintain um, regular shows, obviously, in, in Berlin. So be doing, running, producing shows here, um, expanding my social media presence mm. and doing tours as much as possible. And then um, over the next, like once everything opens up again, I want to be dipping across to New York uh, a couple of times a year and getting doing as many spots as possible and being in, in that scene because that is where the most comedians are in the world really the stand mm -hmm. like stand up and um and there's a really interesting like it's the it's the most it's the biggest population of um english speakers outside of india i guess okay. and, and i don't speak any hindu so I like <laughs> right. you know um apparently they do their punchlines in hindu in, in hindu <laughs> oh, right. oh, oh yeah 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 oh really yeah uh, well yeah. in hindi hindu is the religion in hindi Sorry guys, um, uh, but yeah, in the states there's like the, it's this huge population, so you can tour and you can you can be a touring comedian and you're in 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 the US, and you're also in this um, like it's the it's the place of experts. Like there is UK comedy for mm -hmm. sure, but um, yeah, I feel like uh, it's it's so speaking of hierarchies and speaking of status, going back to our earlier conversation, mm -hmm. I feel like um, in the UK the scene is much more hierarchical. And if you, you know, it's like, oh, so like, have you been on the circuit in London and, and who do you know? And have you done these mics and brr? Whereas it does feel like the US is a lot more um, like of a meritocracy. Yeah, yeah, kind of, hey, you do comedy, let's do this. Yeah, let's see you what know? you got. Yeah, oh, yeah. cool, yeah, put her on, put yeah, her on, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and I felt that when I was in, like, I haven't done any comedy in the States, but I felt that energy when I was in New York back in 2011. And I'm really... I'm really wanting to see how it feels. So the next step is to spend a bit of time in New York and see uh, who I can, you know, what like to learn from that environment and cool. to and to try it. And uh, it's a grind, man. You have to put in the hours and the effort and the exactly. Get, you know, get that re get your rejection uh, thing, you know, up there. Like oh, get yeah. that shield up there, man. But like stand up comedy, it's all about humiliation in public. Mm -hmm. Like and just getting yeah, you know, it's the, the for the next um, two years. I'm staying in Berlin for sure, doing getting as much stage time as possible because yeah, you nice. can do that here. Yeah, you can. And yeah. I I did a bunch. Like I did, I got more stage time in 2020 than I did in 2019. And I I was doing like between the lockdowns, I was doing. Doing, you know, regularly like six shows a week. Nice. Uh, and then like, and there were my shows that I was producing in that, and so like hosting is also like a bunch of time to be able to practice your stuff. Yeah, for sure. So the the goal would be to get a writing job. Um, oh yeah. For like a, a good writing job, and to just be doing my stand up and be able to tour with my stand up and do writing jobs. Nice. That's the plan. That's a fucking great plan, mate. <laughs> Thank you. That is an awesome <laughs> plan. I like that. I like it. It gets me excited talking about yeah, it. Yeah, cool, man. Good. I'm I like you that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. But that's a good plan, man. That's a good plan. Have you ever thought about doing uh, comedy in German? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, I think it would end up being... Like, I'm, I'm not close to it. I do a, I do comedy in Italian. Um, I've yeah? Done, yeah. I've done... <laughs> I do it. Like, okay, I went to Italy. I did two shows uh, that went... That were really nice. I, like, headlined... Oh, quite a no big way. show, That's yeah, cool. like and uh, and then I there's a show in Berlin um, monthly, and I did um, I did a spot there as well, um, and my jokes translate quite quite nicely, so mm -hmm. that was really fun. But it's it's a fun skill you get you get new perspective on your material. Doing it in German, however, it's not a matter of translation. You've real from in my opinion with the German language and the way that um, the humor works with the language structure. You need to think of your jokes. In German, you can't just translate. So yeah. it's a whole different activity coming up with material in German. And I'm, I'll be, I want to have it. I've got it on my list of something to do. Do a five minute set, maybe, maybe even get up to a fifteen minute set. I could even get paid nicely for it. But really, it's a bit of a distraction. Yeah, okay, you know, yeah, I hear you. It's a bit of a distraction, and it's not. You know, I'm not so enamored with German audiences. Mm, yeah, yeah, I've heard the the uh, yeah. I've heard that when you do it German and you get into that world, you know, you get an agent in Germany, for yeah. example, the audiences that you play to aren't really the audiences that we play to. Yeah. Uh, they are your kind of affluent, kind of middle class. Totally. And quite, quite conservative, kind of populous 
And uh, when you're kind of restricted to that, that's difficult to exercise your more controversial stuff or more blue stuff or... Which is all my stuff. Yeah, yeah, you're quite, you're quite a, a blue uh, controversial comedian, you know? Yeah. So, like, I'm not, it's not just, shock, but it's like, it's, it's pushing... It's not shock horror, or it's no. not shock factor, it's and just... it's not like cheap, cheap, tr it's, it's like, it's, I've got a, a, I try to put message and stuff and I'm really trying to expose, you know, um, uh, hypocrisy in society or, or educate, you know, on, on the women's perspective in, in, in a funny way or, mm -hmm. you know, highlight these, these, um, these inequalities that still are, are there. And, uh, and, you know, sex positivity, like I'm, I'm really interested in, in, in breaking down um, shame and, uh, and yeah, breaking down shame and, and making people feel more, more comfortable and, and empowered and, and being sexual beings, because that's what we are. Mm. Bro! <laughs> Whiskey's coming out now, because we're sexual beings, because that's what we are. Bra. So get a message in there. <laughs> I, like I am it. the lion. <laughs> well, I like that, man. That seems to me like a nice wee place to kind of like, you know, kind of round up, man. That is, I'm glad that I've kind of got that in at the end just to be like, right, what are you, what's your plan, you know? Yeah. What's your plan? Thank you for asking. Um, so, mate, um, that was lovely. Is there anything that you want to cover uh, just before we kind of, uh, is there anything that you've kind of wanted to ask or that's been on your mind in the past couple of minutes or the past <laughs> whatever hour it's been? <laughs> Um, I want to think quick. Uh, yeah, you asked me if I had any questions that I wanted to ask you. Yeah. What What do you think the the hmm, I want to do a lame question. What do you think the key to comedy is? Just an easy question. Honesty. Yeah. Yeah, I think it has to be honest because it has to be as true to uh, your own experiences as it possibly can. Yeah. And then you blow up those uh, truisms mm -hmm. with exaggeration, yeah. and uh, you will never be lost in this kind of horrible art of fiction, which can happen to so many comedians because sometimes people will try and tell a story that never actually happened to them. Ugh. <clears throat> yeah, Ugh. or or maybe they, they saw it happen to someone else, or oh, yeah. you, uh, so they kind of try and bring it back into their own kind of thing. I'm sure that works. I find it way more difficult. Um, yeah, the secret is honestly, man, just like be true to your own storytelling yeah. experiences, and then you should be able to make people laugh with that. Yeah. You know, as you said earlier, the self deprecation thing, this rejection, the self humiliation, laugh at yourself. Uh, if anything hurts, uh, if anything is, if you feel angry about anything, if anything feels unjust, laugh at yourself about it because through that, something will come out that you can go, I can't believe I took myself so seriously at that. What a fucking idiot I am. That's what I'm going to write down. Yeah. And then make yourself the class clown or the butt of the joke. Exactly. That's, that's good for like, that's a good general kind of, you know, if you're getting into stand up and then when you've been in it for a while, then you can start to take it off and other like big old tangents and stuff and then eventually work whole hours together and bring them all back into the one mm -hmm. intertwining story and stuff. That's the dream, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, you reminded, yeah. That was the moment that I had today when I found myself staring into the asshole of a dog. It was me. <laughs> I love that. It was me oh fuming about my home situation. Oh my and god, staring into the asshole of a dog. I dog's asshole. Yeah, it's funny how you do that. And it's... I just burst out laughing. Like I was like on the brink of crying and then I just was well, you've laughing got different, at You've myself. got different assholes as well. You've got the big fluffy ones you can't really see. Now you've just got these wee... This was quite an extent like a long fleshy one where you could really <laughs> see the sphincter, you know. Like you could see the, <laughs> yeah. the, the creases. Yeah, yeah, the creases. <laughs> it looks like a leather couch. Did you know in German the, 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 the sphincter is called a rosetta? Oh, really? Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, is that I, I, in a way it is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't know if I would give you one for Valentine's Day, but... Well, a little horsey's a anus. Little, a little horsey's a anus. A little, a little dog's anus. <laughs> horsey's anus, imagine that. <laughs> there you go. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, that's beautiful. I was thinking more like a little, like, <laughs> anal kiss, you know, like a little... Okay. Like, get a little kind of a little Boston Terrier and just... Yeah, like... <laughs> I love that. That's a that's a great way. Can we, can we end the show on that? Yes. A Boston Terrier bum kiss on the cheek. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Perfect. Um, Anna, it was great having you on, mate. <laughs> Fucking fantastic. Where can my two hundred thousand followers that watch this each week, uh, just always, 
where can they see you? Where can they find your stuff? Where yes. can they listen to you? Yeah, let me plug myself like I've done a lot recently. Um, so, uh, Anna Barros, comedian on Facebook. Uh, Anna Barros on YouTube. Uh, then AF Barros on Instagram, oh. TikTok, oh, Clubhouse. TikTok as well. I'm on, I'm, I'm on TikTok mainly to promote my podcast called Adults Only Comedy Berlin. And that is on Spotify and iTunes and Podbean, which is the platform that this podcast you one of your podcasts. Yeah, I do. Awesome. I use Podbean, Spotify, and YouTube. Yeah, yeah. So me as well. So adults only comedy Berlin. Nice, mate. You're busy. I like it. You've been doing stuff with your, you know, this this lockdown. It's yeah. good. It's good to see. I like it. Yeah, you too, man. You've been super busy. I, those the those the ones. Some of us that are doing it, and some of us are lying and rest doing nothing, and right. it's going to come back and bite them. So get moving. <laughs> I like how you keep. Right? <laughs> I know what that I thought in your last podcast I was like God we do stuff people were just like they're gonna regret it it's like I'm slide <laughs> chill out Jesus who's this guy just sit and listen to a podcast cooking my dinner and I'm fucking feeling guilty I don't mean to but you should uh, alright guys that's it from us man thanks for tuning in there's links everywhere for her stuff my stuff and you know the score enjoy and cheers thank you Excuse me, where can I get myself a drink?